Today is Monday, March 6th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Mark Soderberg, ADMIS Senior Ag Analyst, and Alan Bush, ADMIS Senior Financial Economist. Started with the grains this morning, Mark. What are your expectations for Wednesday's USDA reports? Uh, domestically, I look for both uh, corn and soybeans to see some modest usage cuts. Uh, last month, USDA left their export uh, forecast unchanged at 1.925 uh, billion bushels while making a modest cut to the amount of corn used in ethanol production. I look for an opposite of that here this month. I think the, U the export forecast could be cut as much as 100 million bushels. Uh, I'm going with only 50 million bushels right now, given the uncertainty with the Black Sea grain deal, whether that's going to be extended beyond the current date uh, that it expires on March 18th. Uh, so the lower export forecast will trickle right down to higher ending stocks, up 50 million to 1.317 billion. Uh, and my expectations are pretty much in line with the average trade guess. Uh, in soybeans, I look for a 20 million bushel cut in exports there. Uh, as the global demand has shifted to South American origin, uh, year-to-date export uh, commitments have slipped now. We're down 3% versus last year. Uh, so this 20 million bushel uh, ending stocks, uh, look for ending stocks going up 20 million to 245 million bushels. Uh, in South America, I don't think you're going to see any changes to the record uh, harvest for both corn and soybeans out of Brazil. Uh, I look for the USDA to kind of continue to chip away at their production numbers in Argentina. In corn, I'm looking for a 3 million metric ton drop to uh, 44 million metric tons uh, and a 4 million metric ton reduction to the soybean crop down to uh, 37 million metric tons. Mark, there seems to be some talk regarding Chinese corn sales. <laughs> What's the latest on these rumors? Are they just rumors? Well, I think um, last Wednesday is when that uh, talk of Chinese interest in U.S. corn first surfaced. Uh, prices had a nice turnaround that day from an oversold level. Uh, we did see some uh, confirmation of a, of a big sale, 182,000 tons sold to an unknown buyer this, this morning, about 7 million bushels, and that pretty much in line with what uh, the rumored sale was. Uh, there was also a 4 million bushel sale to Japan this morning. I don't think that's going to be enough, enough to move the needle at all and make people think the USDA won't have to lower their, their export forecast here on Wednesday. Um, but if we do, if we are going to see any big sales here to China this marketing year, they're really going to have to be over the next couple of months uh, until the South American supplies a second corn crop from Brazil is ready. Uh, U.S. corn is uh, the cheapest in the world outside of uh, Ukraine right now. So and there's only two years ago since China was a uh, huge buyer of over 225 million bushels of U.S. corn uh, from this late January to mid-May time frame. Last question, Mark, looking at South America, Brazil in particular, what is the progress on Brazil's record corn and soybean crops? Uh, soybean harvest has made some pretty good strides here in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, late last week, they were coming in at harvest progress between 40 to 45 percent. That's about 10 percent behind the historical average. Uh, the second corn crop being planted right behind that, that's at about 70 percent complete right now, also down 10% from the historical norm. So a little bit of concern that uh, the delayed corn plantings, a little bit of that crop may be exposed to summer heat, but probably uh, not enough to make a huge difference, especially considering the fact that uh, the subsoil moisture levels are, are real good right now. Should get that, uh, that corn crop out to a good start. And in turning to the financial markets, what will Fed Chair Paul say during his testimony before the Senate Banking Committee tomorrow and the House Financial Services Committee on Wednesday. So I think the testimony will, for the most part, be identical. In fact, that is the uh, tradition. But what he will say, I, I think, uh, will that be, will be that he will echo what other Fed officials have recently said, suggesting that interest rates will go higher than policymakers anticipated just a few weeks ago. Uh, conditionally, if economic uh, numbers come in on the strong side. So his testimony will be very closely watched for any uh, clues as far as uh, interest rate policies. Still appears, though, that the, the Fed will be hiking their key rate, the Fed funds rate, by 25 basis points at its March 22nd meeting. Maybe one or two more 25 basis point hikes following that meeting. 
Alan, uh, besides Fed Powell, a uh, Fed Chair Powell, what are the most other most likely market moving reports scheduled for this week? Okay, well, we'll have on Tuesday at two o'clock the January Consumer Credit Report expected to show a 26.4 billion increase. And then on Friday, we'll have the February non-farm payrolls guessed at up 215,000, private payrolls guessed at a 213,000 increase, and the unemployment rate expected to be unchanged at 3.4%. Lastly, on what are the charts saying about the outlook for the 30-year Treasury bond futures? Well, this is a very interesting chart. Last Thursday, the March Treasury bond futures fell under a six-day downtrend line this after a, a rather uh, long decline in prices. However, this appears to be a false sell signal now that on Friday, futures av advanced above that downtrend line and also on the same day advanced above a different four-week downtrend line. So all of that in one day and on, on good volume. So th this appears to suggest that the 30-year Treasury bond futures have bottomed. And I think for the entire, entire yield curve, we'll probably see uh, higher prices for futures. So the technicals very quickly turning from bearish now to apparently uh, bullish with uh, what we have seen over the last few days. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.